The goal of this video is to describe uh, how we think through the process of creating an experimental flowchart. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our procedure, which usually is some kind of step-by-step -step procedure or maybe if we're given some guidelines, and drawing out a diagram of what that procedure is going to look like. So we're going to take a step-by-step -step procedure of maybe we know we're going to follow or a general idea of what we want to do in a lab and then be able to diagram that. So I'm going to use an example of a lab that we've done before. Okay, so I'm going to use the example of the lab where we wanted to determine the density of an egg. Okay, so that was the goal of our lab. Okay, well as we are thinking through, this is our goal, how are we going to achieve that goal? Well what we're going to do is we are going to measure the density of the egg indirectly. Okay, so we're going to measure the density by determining the density of something other than the egg, but that we know is equal to the density of that egg. Well, how are we going to do that? What we're going to do is we are going to find a solution with equal density to the density of our egg. Right? Well, obviously it's not easy just to go and find solutions like this, but we're going to make a solution. So what we would do is we would say, okay, well, I'm going to start with water. Okay, well, what we know about water is the density of water is less than the density of our egg. Well, that means that our egg is going to sink. Okay, so we start with that solution. And then what we're going to do with that solution is then we are going to, from that, add salt to make the density of our solution equal to the density of our egg. Okay, So we're going to add salt to that solution. And the way that we know that we're going to do that is that here our egg floats. It's going to float in the middle of our solution. So now we know that we've gotten to the place where we made our solution equal to the density. Well now if we have a liquid, it's really easy to measure our, our density. We're going to do that in three different ways. Right? One of them is we are going to find out the volume <clears throat> by graduated cylinder and then the mass by a balance. Okay, so that's one way that we are going to determine the density. Then we would see well, we're going to do it another way. We're going to determine the volume by a graduated pipette and the mass by balance. Okay, so that was our second way of doing that. And then our third way that we would identify this would be the volume by a volumetric pipette and then the mass by a balance as well. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and achieved and measured the volume and density, or volume and mass of each of these, then from each of those, what we can do is we can find out the density by taking the ra ratio of the mass and our volume. Okay, so again, the idea here is not necessarily to make it so that it's step one through 15, but it has a general flow or diagram of what we're going to do. Now some places it may make sense for us to include concentrations or amounts of reactants that we are going to use or solutions we're going to use. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it just makes sense for us to kind of write out a general process of what we're going to do. Okay, so you're going to prepare a flow chart uh, for this next up upcoming lab. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what you want to do, how you want to diagram your flow chart, think about what your goal is from that goal, how you're going to achieve that goal through the procedure.